name's Shauna. If you didn't already know who I was or you didn't know how to pronounce my name. And I've been fortunate enough to have been invited to do a soap collaboration with the superstar soaper Lisa with I Dream and Soap, as well as the sweet soaper Tammy with Walnut Creek Bath Boutique. Now I would be very surprised if you knew me but didn't know either one of them because I'm a little channel. But I don't want to assume anything, so their links are in my description if you want to go meet them. And surely you'll be motivated to subscribe and support them in their soaping endeavors. The theme of this collaboration is books turned into movies. For convenience sake, I'd like to own the book and the movie. So what books do I own that have been turned into movies? So I thought, well, I got this nice collection here of classic literature. Let's go with Pinocchio. Now this is not a shortened version. This is the actual Pinocchio story written by Carlo Collodi. Carlo Collodi is an Italian author. This book was published around 1882. There isn't a specific date because it's just that old. And the very first movie version of this book was released in 1940 by Disney. This is a great movie, but I must warn you, this movie is barely anything like the book. So to get even deeper into my homework of movies and books, I thought, well, what's the most recent Pinocchio movie that's come out? And that would be Pinocchio, which came out in 2019 in Italy. This is an Italian movie. And then in 2020, it came out in the United States. Now this movie is trying to be the book. I must say that Pinocchio works better as a book. Even though you can tell they were trying and they put their, their hearts into this movie. I don't like this movie. I didn't like it. Maybe a lot of people like it and that's cool. That's good. It's We're all different and it'd be really boring if we all had the same opinions. I didn't like this movie. I really like this movie. I rewatched it. Walt Disney's Pinocchio is a great film. It's not like the book. This is just like the book and I don't like it. The book's good. I like the book. Anyway, moving on to the soap. So I'm planning while I'm putting the soap together, I will be discussing a few details of the differences between the book and the movie. And if you have never actually read the book, you might be a little startled about the contents within. My plan is to do a one pot wonder, wonder, one pot wonder with three different colors. We're gonna go with black done with activated charcoal. I'm a fan of our activated charcoal because it is it has its benefits and it makes a color. We're also going to do red with firecracker mica. And then as the third color, we're going with the natural color of the batter and what it decides to look like. The fragrance that we're going to go with is pink watermelon. Now when I purchased this fragrance oil, it did leak. Therefore, I'm missing a lot of my label, but you can make out that it says pink watermelon apricot i didn't even realize it had apricot but it's barely there you can see that okay it's pink watermelon apricot and all this time i thought it was just pink watermelon the way crafter's choice describes pink watermelon apricot sweet delicious watermelon with hints of bright apricot and white flowers it's a very sweet friendly fragrance it kind of reminds me of maybe like a, a watermelon candy I chose this because Pinocchio is extremely childlike. Well, he is a child. Well, he's a marionette, but he becomes a child. He becomes a real boy. But also my color is red and black. I usually go with watermelon anyway, so watermelon is a good choice for this particular thing we're doing here. Now for additives, Kaolin Clay. Kaolin Clay is one of my favorite additives. It makes a difference in how your soap feels. And you know, you know the, the claim on the internet saying that it might help anchor your fragrance oil. Then we're gonna add in some sugar because what's a child's favorite thing besides fun? That would be candy. And then for a third additive, we're going with colloidal oatmeal. Why did I choose colloidal oatmeal? Well, the author's name is Carlo Collodi. So colloidal oatmeals colloidal, colloidy. Then I made some embeds. Now, when it comes to these embeds, I have the design in my head, but I already know this isn't gonna look like what I want it to look like. I'm going with the marionette theme. Pinocchio has no strings. 
who walks and talks doesn't have strings. So my soap is going to be themed with the thing that the puppet master holds and then four strings. Now this is where I'm like, ah, <laughs> this isn't gonna, this isn't probably gonna look like what I want it to look like because these are not thin enough and I couldn't get them any thinner, but these are gonna be strings. So it's gonna be like marionette strings, no marionette. And you know the really cute song in the Disney movie, I've got no strings to hold me down. And I was always curious what that little Dutch marionette meant when she said she'd cut her strings for him. All right, let's go check out how this goes. Well, we've gotten here all of my oils. If you're curious what kind of oils I use, just check the description, you'll see them all. Here we've got our fragrance oil as well as our colloidal oatmeal and kaolin clay and powdered sugar and our lye water which i forgot to mention does have tests of silk fibers melted in it and let's get going here we got our activated charcoal which activated charcoal is known to absorb and boy did it absorb anyway so geppetto the marionette maker creates a marionette out of this log of wood that already is alive and he creates pinocchio and the last thing he makes is pinocchio's legs as soon as Pinocchio is finished, he immediately runs away and is a very disobedient rascal and, quote, wretched boy. So Mr. Collodi, the author, was attempting to share the philosophy of how to raise a child by considering allowing a boy to learn the natural consequences of his bad decisions and actions. As Pinocchio makes a lot of awful decisions. He gets into terrible scenarios because of his drive to disregard the wisdom of others who probably know a thing or two about life, such as Geppetto, who he calls father. Here we got our red. They're dispersed in oil, by the way. Now I won't get into the specifics of the horrible decisions that Pinocchio would make and the terrible troubles he got into, but despite being a terribly disobedient and ungrateful brat, Geppetto, his creator, consistently shows him love and grace. Just realized I wanted black to be on top, therefore black needs to be on the bottom. Add in all the black. Next, I want red. Now, when it comes to the Disney movie, uh, it was the second full-length animated Disney movie ever. The first one was Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. If you haven't seen Disney's Pinocchio, it begins with a marionette brought to life by the Blue Fairy. Instead of a complex story of the love a parent has for an unruly child that takes every piece of love and advice for granted, Disney narrows the story down to a sweet story of a naive, ignorant, helpless boy who ought to always listen to his father. So Disney said about the book, Pinocchio is too cocky, too much of a wise guy, and too puppet-like to be sympathetic to the audience. So the story of a disrespectful boy who gets tortured and almost killed for his ignorance was not suitable for children. Yes, I'm referencing this, the book. So instead, Disney's Pinocchio is a lesson of those who are brave enough and always truthful, they will find salvation. So it's a much easier story to swallow, basically. Because the book is quite brutal. And if Jiminy Cricket is your favorite character in Disney's Pinocchio, don't even read the book. Not because his character is different in the book, but because his character gets murdered by Pinocchio within like the first couple pages. Here we go with our one pot wonder. Let's hope it goes successfully. And so many people are watching me right now. I'm getting nervous. So the movie that came out in 2019, as well as 2020 in the US, really does try to follow the book. And for the most part, it's pretty accurate. They did embellish some things and you know, make it slightly more movie interesting but i didn't personally like the movie because it was a little too weird i guess if you enjoy things like uh if you like the uh, live action alice in wonderland or things like that you know where there's weird characters and stuff maybe you'd like it i just don't care for that kind of thing um sorry slightly serious over here right now but they did a good job i mean pinocchio looks good uh the acting seems good it's just weird i just think that that kind of story works better as something that you read and imagine not something that somebody else tries to you know create i think i'm gonna go ahead and add the strings the strings which are the the thing that makes me most concerned about the final result of my soap but uh we're gonna add them. Try to make them up and down. 
My batter is thick enough to hold them, so that's nice. I enjoyed the story of Pinocchio, the book, because it was actually pretty shocking. I was like, wow, this is not the Pinocchio that I know because I had only seen the Disney movie, of course, first. Most people, I think, have, maybe. Which, the Pinocchio movie, you know when he goes to Funland and he's smoking and drinking? That actually does not happen in the book. That's all Disney right there. Giving him a big old cigar and drinking a bunch of beer. I thought that was kind of interesting. Let's hope I don't get too much for air pockets. Okay, I can see one of the strings needs to be shoved under. Now we'll add the rest of our soap here. And just hope for the best, huh? I couldn't sink my marionette handle in any further, so we're going to try to bury it. As I make this, I want to uh, suggest something to my audience. I suggest you keep your expectations for the final result of this soap low, because I'm not sure if this is going to turn out much like uh, my plan was. But when it comes time to cut, don't be too excited. Just be more curious than anything because I don't want to disappoint you too heavily. Then with this little bit of soap, we're going to try to swirl it, but that marionette handle is actually really in the way. Now, we'll see you when it's time to cut this. Two days later. There. Nice. It is seven in the morning right now. Got the day off. What is the best thing to do on your day off? Cut some soap, as well as get a whole bunch of other necessary things done around the house. There. Nice. Now earlier, do you remember what my suggestion was about how high your expectations should be on this soap? Do you remember what I said? Right. Your expectations should be low. Okay. And then also the first cut is never actually a 100% representation of the entire cut. Wow. Yeah, let's hope that's not quite the representation of the rest of the cut, but I think it might be. Let's keep going. I also kind of have a feeling that my soap might be the least impressive of all the three soaps showing up in this collaboration. Look at that. It looks like, it almost looks like a spider web here. So what I was really trying to go for with these color choices was the time when Pinocchio is performing on stage as a marionette. And oftentimes theater curtains are red. The black is supposed to be because it's a show and it's usually, you know, there's blackness. The uncolored is supposed to be like the stage area. Even though this did not turn out like I wanted it to turn out, I think we got a, a new cool thing going on here with a, a spider web look. All right, let's keep going on this fantastic adventure of my Pinocchio soap. At least the strings are under the marionette handle. I was concerned about them being outside of that and that wouldn't make any sense. I can kind of see it. It's just really, really thick strings, but I can kind of see it. You know, storytelling is all about using your imagination. And if I use my imagination, I can see the design I was going for. So in the intro, I mentioned that I always wondered what the Dutch girl was saying when she said I'd cut my strings for you and she was talking to Pinocchio. That was actually the French marionette that said that. I got strings, but on you, I cut my strings for you. The Dutch marionette said she'd bust her strings for him. Yeah, 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 if you would do, I'd bust my strings for you. You know what? I'm, even though I do have this, this deep down feeling of sheer disappointment, I also have this light feeling of, it's not so bad. It looks okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not completely broken over this, but I do know if there is a, the three tiers, like you got the first place, the second place, and the third place, I'm pretty certain my soap is down there on the third place, looking up at the first and second place. But that's okay, at least I got a place, right? I was reading in my Pinocchio book that Carlo Collodi was inspired to create this character Pinocchio based on himself, because he was quite a, an unruly child. And I suppose he probably learned a lot of life lessons, didn't he? The goal of all of us, to gain a little wisdom. 
Now, there's really no point in showing these side by side, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is kind of startling looking, isn't it? A little bit. So by now you're probably asking me, Shauna, if you weren't happy with the, with the final soap for this collaboration, why didn't you just try again? Why don't you remake it? Well, even if I did submit a competitive looking soap for this collaboration and I gained like a whole bunch of new subscribers because they were so impressed with my Pinocchio soap, I'd probably disappoint you later because I don't really have that awesome gift of being able to make a super impressive soap because I want to. Usually if I'm really impressed with my soaps and I'm really happy and I'm like, this is just the greatest soap, usually an accident. I decided not to remake my soap, even though I did think about it, otherwise I wouldn't even be talking about it. First of all, I don't typically make really impressive artistic soaps anyway. Second, there are so many times when you have this soap design in mind and you're so excited and you can't wait to see what it's gonna look like and then you're disappointed because it's not what you wanted it to look like. And that's just part of being a soaper, at least an average soaper like me, which is why I feel so fortunate to be included in this collaboration with Lisa and Tammy because my soaps don't shine that brightly compared to other soapers. There are some incredibly artistic people who make soap and you're just like, I can't even believe what you just made. And it's soap. Turn over and I look at my soaps and I'm just like, well, I got really great ingredients. Really great ingredients in my soap. What, do, what should I call this soap? No strings attached. Wait a minute. I have this memory in my mind of the past. There's this NSYNC album called No Strings Attached where all the NSYNC members were marionettes. You remember that? I'm curious if we're in the same age range. They even had little Barbie dolls. Anyway, the majority of my soaps that I create are not really to impress you. I mostly just like to talk to you. I enjoy sharing facts and information about things. Like I really enjoyed this collaboration because I had to do a little bit of research on Pinocchio and I had a little bit of homework, watching a couple movies and reading the whole book. I liked that. Typically my channel is more, hey, let me tell you about this or that. It's mostly just me being me. And those who have already left, cause they're like, man, this girl, why in the world did she get recommended by Lisa and Tammy? Look at her, look at her soap. I don't want those people to subscribe anyway. So those of you who have stayed and you're like, yeah, that soap's not really that pretty, but Shauna seems like an okay type type of person. Maybe I'll stick around and see what else she has to say. Those are the kind of people that I want to stay. Thank you again, Lisa, for inviting me to this collaboration. You are such a successful soaper. Maybe one day we'll get to do a collaboration again, but if not, that's okay. I'll just keep doing my thing over here, making soaps and having a good time. That's pretty much my thing is I like to have a good time. Hi, Boris. Here's Boris. You want an update? He's getting bigger. Look how big. Boris is sweet and says he likes my soap, so what more could I want? So as I said in the intro, check my description for a link to Lisa's channel and Tammy's channel because there could be that small percentage of people who have somehow found me before finding Tammy or Lisa. See ya.